I want to start off with um, two thank yous. The first one is to um, Ruth for everything that you've done for the cause. Uh, you know, particularly all the work you helped me with um, Business of Britain over the years and setting that up. It's been incredibly helpful. And also to David, again, for your contribution. I mean, it's been amazing, again, with Business of Britain and all the advice you've given, particularly pushing the sort of positive arguments which we talk about today. It's been really, really useful and helpful. I thought I'd start by talking about the role which I think um, economics will play in the e-referendum deb debate. Now, lots of people have talked about where sort of public opinion is on this issue. And a lot of people talked about how there's a third of people who want to be, who are the core vote, who will vote um, leave, whatever happens. How is a third of people who are the remain vote, and they'll vote remain, whatever happens. And then there's been lots of analysis of what happens to that swing third in the centre. And if you look at those uh, swing voters, you know, they are uh, leaning towards voting leave. Their instincts, their heart, is basically saying they want to have a leave vote. And also they're concerned about um, issues like migration, very concerned about migration, want to restore uh, border controls. That's a really important um, issue for them. They're concerned about um, democracy, about the issue of um, who governs Britain and making our institutions accountable and having greater control over our lives. But they do have some concerns about the Leave vote, and those concerns are a lot around you know, jobs and prosperity and investment and what have you. And as a Leave family, we've got to do everything we can to actually reassure them on these issues and paint a picture like the pit speakers are today of how life would actually be more prosperous and there'd be more jobs and more inward investment into the uh, UK were we to be outside of the EU. And that's why economics is so important. And we all know what the playbook of the, um, the Stronger In campaign will be, the Remain side will be. Uh, they've got the same pollsters and the same uh, pundits with them and the same consultants as uh, advised on the Scottish referendum campaign for the Best Together campaign. And they're going to embark on uh, Project Fear. We've seen that, the start of that already, where you'll have um, businesses come out saying that life will be disastrous were we to vote to leave the EU. There'll be some business leaders saying how they'll be uh, scaling back on jobs and investment into the UK and moving factories and that sort of thing. They'll try that same playbook again. But I don't think it'll have the same traction anywhere near the same traction as what happened with the Scottish referendum. Because actually, in, on this issue, you know, business is actually very much uh, divided. Yes, of course, you've got the big multinational companies and some of the big American investment banks and what have you who are desperate for Britain to stay in the EU. They love having one set of regulations made uh, by Brussels, so one place where they've got to lobby. That makes a lot of rational sense for them. But if you move to looking into the private companies and the family companies, they have a very different priority in the SMEs in the UK. They're much more divided because they can see the negative economic impact of Britain being in the EU. And Business of Britain has an important role to play in this. Um, it now has 1,500 uh, companies behind it. It now has um, regional campaigns. Uh, we've been setting up regional campaigns right across the country. The, the first one being in the North East, which launched in January at the factory of uh, EBAC that makes uh, washing machines, where the chairman, uh, John Elliott, came out for leave. And that had a huge impact in the local and regional media. And the more businessmen we can get out representing local businesses in the local papers, actually saying that a leave vote is a safer option for people, people's jobs, the more likely we are to win. So Vote Leave has three uh, key messages. One is cost, one is control, and the third one is the safer option. And on all of these, there's an economic uh, dimension. Now on the issue of cost, of course, the um, £315 million a week, which Britain sends to the EU, that could be spent much better on priorities um, that the UK voters and taxpayers want. So that's a key area that could uh, change. On the question of control, there's a huge issue when it comes to economics about the whole aspect of regulation. Now, we've heard a lot about the, the cost of regulations in the past, but also we need to think about actually where regulations and where laws are actually best made. 
just pick out uh, one example of a regulation recently, the, uh, the Clinical Trials Directive. This has had a huge devastating impact on cancer research in the UK, a good example of how uh, a directive uh, made in Brussels has had a huge negative impact on the UK and how it hasn't suited our needs. So we need to regain control over uh, different areas. And the third option, the, the safer option, we need to paint a picture of basically how voting leave is the safer option. Um, both Ruth and Steve talked about the ongoing um, Eurozone crisis. That will be um, a big theme. So in particular, the continued uh, bailouts that the UK taxpayer will be expected to make towards the, the Eurozone as it slowly uh, collapses. So the safer option in that area will be to cut ourselves off, to insulate ourselves from the imploding Eurozone and actually seek um, a better deal. So just to finish off, to talk about trade, this is a key aspect that will come up, I think, many times in the debate. And again, I think the best option for the UK, for businesses and for the um, British economy, is actually for the UK to be able to conduct its own trade deals. The EU is now a regional uh, protectionist um, bloc without the right trade deals to suit um, Britain uh, going forward. We need to be able to conduct our own trade deals with the uh, fast-growing countries around the world. You know, the EU is shrinking in size as, a, size as a proportion of the world economy. We need to have the right trade deals so British businesses can actually trade outside of the EU. And these are trade deals which the EU so far has been unwilling to uh, conduct. So I think there is a very exciting, uh, very positive vision uh, for Britain outside of the EU. Uh, a huge aspect of that is economics, because we can win this referendum if we convince people that their jobs will be safe and that Britain will be more prosperous outside of the EU. Thank you.